What's up guys, Dan Watson, LearningCameras.com. We've got the NX1 here and uh, a third party adapter on it with a Canon lens. And I uh, just wanted to give you a couple opinions on using these third party adapters and, and other lenses on them because there were some things on the NX1 that kind of took me by surprise and some very kind of interesting things going on, most of them negative, with how the camera receives this. So um, first things first, the adapter, I'll put the link in the description below, but it's actually pretty good. I mean, I only paid 25 bucks for it, and I have to say, it's good quality. I was worried about the lens being too tight on there, but it's not. It feels great. So, can't complain at all about that. Now, this Canon lens is probably not the best for it, so I've got a cinema lens that's manual coming in because you cannot change the aperture on this lens or on the adapter. So, but if you're using like one of the manual, I've got the 85mm T1.5, cinema lens coming in that does have manual aperture control so I'll be able to control my aperture straight from the dial there and won't have an issue with that. No electronics on this adapter so you're going to be manual only including the aperture so that's the weakness of this. This is a Canon 85 1.8 and so with this lens on here I'll be using it only at f1.8. Now there's ways around that if you have a Canon camera you can hold down the depth of field button while you've got it a little more closed up but complicated stuff. So this is Really, if you own some manual aperture lenses on that, that would be the extreme, uh, that would be where I would be looking to do this the most. However, you can put on your Canon glass, and this is uh, very good and very sharp at 1.8, so it makes a great 1.8 lens. Uh, now, let's get to some of these limitations because they are pretty extreme, and we're going to start out in photo mode. And so, if you are in photo mode on this camera and you throw uh, this, this lens on here, the first thing that you will notice is that while you had your focus peaking on, on the built-in Samsung lens, and I will say one of the reasons I wanted to go manual lenses on here is that the focus system on these is electronic and it's kind of a fly-by-wire. And so uh, the more you turn it and the faster you turn it, it's going to change how fast it changes the focus from infinity to close. And I will say it does it extremely slowly. So it's almost impossible to do a rack focus from something further away to something close. They're minor adjustments, and you can't set those distances. It's going to be different every time. It's really, really difficult to do that on those. Now, with these kind of lenses right here, uh, it's going to be just a turn of that. And you can see I don't have to go very far. It's about a quarter to half a turn on this lens before I go from infinity to a very close, to the closest it can focus. And uh, the first thing you'll notice in that photo mode is that your, um, your focus peaking is going to disappear completely. And at first I was like, what the heck? Why is my focus peaking gone? And uh, the thing is, you actually have to press the, the OK button, the display, there's an OK button right here to trigger your focus settings. You actually have to hit that before it's going to engage. Now, a uh, couple things. By default, I had this on, well, the interesting thing is that that is not how it works when you have the Samsung lens on it. You do not have to hit that focus button or that focus point adjustment button before you're going to see that. And so that is something that only happens for whatever reason when you have these. Now that button does two things. That button can, when you have a lens like this on here, uh, trigger it to zoom in further or change your focus points around. When you're in photo mode, if you hit that button, you can have it zoom in 5x or 8x into your subject. It's still going to keep your focus peaking on and then focus and bring it back out. You can also turn that off so that when you do hit the button, all it does is bring up focus peaking and nothing else. So the only thing that will happen is your focus peaking will turn up and that's it every time you hit that button. So the downside is that you have to hit that button every time you want to engage the focus peaking. Then you can focus and you can click the shutter and then you'll be okay. Here's where the problems and the nightmares start out is that that's in photo mode. If you want to enable movie preview mode and you do that by hitting this button right here, you can program it to do something else, it's gone. This button no longer does anything and thus you have no focus peaking when you're doing a manual lens like this. You're still going to be able to see it on there but you don't have focus peaking. You also lose the ability to have that zoom in by 5x so you're not going to be able to do that either. So really you're only getting that focus peaking in photo mode and even then with some strange limitations on that that don't exist with the Samsung lens. So very weird on how that is implemented right there. And uh, the same thing happens in the viewfinder. You do get focus peaking in both obviously. So um, however, once again, when you're shooting in movie mode, 
you have no focus peaking. Uh, I'm very curious as to the reason. Now, if you're in, if even if you have the Samsung lens on there and you hit that button, that button doesn't do anything. So it's almost like they've deactivated that button in movie mode. And then for some reason, you have to hit that button in order to engage focus peaking with a non Samsung lens. So uh, I kind of wonder if it kind of happened a little bit by surprise that since this button is already disabled in movie mode, it's not that they were trying to disable focus peaking in movie mode, it's that this button that activates it is, does nothing in movie mode. So it might be something like that. I'm not sure if this is an issue that could be addressed with firmware, probably, or if Samsung has intentionally done this this way. However, I love using third-party lenses. Cinema lenses are great, and especially with the inabilities to be able to get very accurate manual focus on these Samsung lenses, this is going to be huge to be able to do that, and you can't, um, at least right now. So those are some of the idiosyncrasies that are going on. Just some weird stuff with how that's operating. There's also just some interesting things going on with this camera, too, that, that limit it. And like I said, you can't even zoom in while shooting uh, movies, so you can't get that function either. And that is with the Samsung lens or with any lens. So uh, even with the Samsung lens on there, your focus options while shooting are going to be a little more limited to focus peaking. And even then, you're only going to get focus peaking if you turn on manual on your lens. If you're in auto, there doesn't seem to be any way to engage focus peaking. So. You know, I like that uh, to have it on all the time because I don't quite trust the automatic focus on this. So the focus peaking kind of gives me the option of correcting it if I don't feel that it's right. And uh, there's also no way to bring up manual focus without hitting the dial on the lens, on the Samsung lens. And so uh, if you do this, most of the time you're gonna move the camera quite a bit even if you're on a tripod. So that's gonna be a downside with that is there's no way to just, you know, click a button and bring up the manual focus. So. Uh, no options for stuff like that. So definitely some limitations on this that I was very surprised by. I do have that, uh, that cinema lens coming in on Tuesday, so I'm gonna try that out, update you if there's anything different with that and uh, than this lens. And it's from a third party manufacturer, so maybe there's some differences in there. But hopefully at this point, uh, Samsung's gonna update the, the firmware on that because this is a huge issue for me and it really takes away much of the benefit to being able to do manual focus and manual shooting because if you want focus peaking you're going to be limited at this point to samsung lenses or at least a lens that's going to communicate with your camera body that seems to be uh, the issue so i don't think it has to be a samsung lens but it'll have to be a lens that has electronic communication with your camera body in order to enable that it's almost as if samsung does not think that there's a lens attached to this camera while there is so uh you know that's kind of the stuff that you're gonna have to deal with so update me if you know of anything that i'm doing wrong but it really seems that this is the way around it tons of limitations and hopefully samsung can make uh, some changes on that so once again the adapter i'm going to post in the link uh, if i update this at all you can check it out at the original post learning cameras i'll put the link for that too so you can click on that and see if there's any updates to this especially when i get the cinema lens and also just subscribe and uh, you know a lot of this NX1 stuff we're gonna keep updating as we go. So stay tuned for some more videos on that and obviously the full review. So thanks for watching.